ask if uh, Rabbi Joshua Leaf would come to the podium. Good morning, I'm Rabbi Joshua Leaf. I'm the president of our club in Healy. It is my honor to introduce uh, Shane Barmita, the incoming president of Rotary International for all of us this morning. Shane Barmita is only the fourth person from India in 115 years to be nominated to serve as president of Rotary International. He'll serve the year 2021 to 22. He was born in 1959 in Kolkata. He uh, had a, a wonderful academic career as a young man at St. Xavier College. He got a master's in commerce, is a chartered accountant, but also an accountant company secretary. He heads the Skyline Group engaged in real estate development in different parts of India, including the largest housing program in Rajasthan. He's a member of many professional and cultural and charitable organizations. He serves as a trustee on board of Shelter Rocks and also Operation Highside in India. He joined Rotary in 1985. He's a member of Rotary Kolkata Mahanda. That's the downtown main club for those of you who are in India. He served as Rotary District Officer from 1999 to 2000 and on the Rotary International Board of Directors from 2011 to 2017. He's been the chair of the Rotary's Joint Partnership and the Strategic Planning Committee for Rotary in India. Is somebody just joining? Rotary in India's Centennial Celebrations and Rotary in India's Planning Foundation. Uh, while serving as Rotary International Director, he added two countries to Rotary's goal, Bhutan and Maldives. Uh, he has led many major service missions in India and across Southeast Asia, uh, constructing 500 homes for tsunami survivors, the Shelter Kit Program, which has responded to over 20 different disasters across India with more than 15,000 shelter kits distributed. He founded the Pediatric Heart Surgery Program in India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Nepal, and Africa. Uh, he has led literacy programs across India that have uh, reached over 15 million children. He has also been instrumental in setting up 15 eye hospitals in India, performing 50,000 eye operations each year. And he has spearheaded India-wide projects in collaboration with Narendra Modi, the Prime Minister of India, uh, for creating 6,000 royal toilets, bringing sanitation to 30,000 people in the distant countryside. Also, programs in water, sanitation, literacy, health care, the environment, and disaster management, and has been lauded by the Indian government for his role in nation building across India. He is uh, honored to have received from Rotary International and the Rotary Foundation the Service of Sub Award, the Meritorious Service Award, the Distinguished Service Award, and he will serve as the incoming leader of 1.2 million Rotarians across 200 countries and geographical areas. He's married to his wife Rashi, they have a son Shibab, and daughter in law Diva, and one son Deer, and his guiding mantra in life is service is the value that we pay for the space we occupy. As we can see, we're just waiting for the speaker to come online. Um, we do have our two um, RI directors who are coming on the call this morning, and they're already on uh, the Zoom link. So Peter and Seth can get online. So once Shaker gets on, we'll go ahead and start. Here he is. Go ahead. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I see he is on. 
Let's give a warm welcome for our international praise president elect, Shaker Mehta. Mr. President-elect, the floor is yours, sir. Thank you. And a good morning to each and every one of you. Although I can just see eight of us, I'm sure there are many others who I can't see. But you know, I would have been very happy meeting you each and every one of you in person. That's what the plan was. But this last one year, somebody else has plans for us but I'm sure things are getting better and soon I will be able to meet you, shake hands with you, have some coffee, discuss a bit of Rotary and discuss how we grow more and do more in Rotary. So President Select, the next 13 months can be one of the most exciting months of your life. Yes, you may say, oh, that's a big statement. What's so exciting about becoming a president of a Rotary Club that it can be one of your best years of your life? I say this because I've experienced it. 30 years back, when I became the president of my club, I rate it as one of the best years I've spent in my life. No better opportunity of hands-on service than when you are the president of your club. You work with some of the friends of lifetime and you do good things in the world. Very recently, the Rotary Magazine asked me in an interview, uh, President-elect, what would you prefer? President of your Rotary Club or President of Rotary? My answer was President of my Rotary Club. So that's how much importance I give to this one position, President of the Rotary Club. I may inspire you today. I may motivate you. For 15 minutes, my friends, Peter, Kyle, Stephanie, Archik, outstanding leaders, both of them. So outstanding that Stephanie is this year's executive committee chair and the next year's executive committee chair is Peter, Kyle. They can inspire you, motivate you. But you know, the work will all happen at the club level. And it is you presidents who will get that work done. The work of Rotary, and that's what I said, grow more and do more. Let's first discuss grow more. For last 20 years, we are stuck at 1.2 million. I don't think that's a good sign for an organization. Does your, are you happy when your business does not grow for 20 years? Are you happy when your consultancy does not grow? Or if you are a CPA, your practice does not grow? I don't think that's a good sign. We all, and we are 1.2 million to increase that. So my friends, I ask you to do a difficult task, but made very easy for each and every one of us. All we need to do is just get one member each. Let's not count percentage, what each club got, no. We just want every Rotarian to get one member. Normally, when I can see each of you, I would have asked you to raise your hands, but I can't see you. So, but if you still want, just raise your hands and see your screens. And the, what you will see will amaze you, I tell you. Okay, let's do it. Everyone who feels in the next 13 months, you'll get just one member into Rotary, raise your hands. And now look at your screens. And who says membership will not grow in America? It will if we understand that membership is my individual responsibility, not my club's collective responsibility. Once I get in the member, retaining that person, engaging that person is my club's collective responsibility. So friends, we will get each one bring one. We'll get members and we'll not let them go because we'll engage them. We'll keep them within ourselves. So each one, bring one and retain all. And you know, the pandemic has taught us one thing, how to engage people. This virtual world, this is one thing we have understood. We can really engage people because distances are no more a 
hurdle no time is wasted in 5 minutes you can move from america to japan japan to korea korea to india and i have done this many days many times i'm sure peter stephanie so many of you have done it on zoom so let's engage the rotarians let's form new clubs that's something america is trying to do and i'm very happy that they are succeeding at it but it needs to be given a one more big push and again this pandemic will teach us the best lesson as far as flexible clubs are concerned one year back virtual was was not the best thing in the world but today is not virtual the most talked about thing after the pandemic everything we do is virtual in 2 minutes i want to have a discussion with somebody i say okay come on a zoom call did we ever think one year back we would be able to do that so virtual clubs is the future hybrid clubs i will put all my bets on passport clubs global clubs satellite clubs cause based clubs another great concept people around the world who are interested in water causes they can come together and form a club and do projects around the world this year in africa next year in bolivia the year after that maybe in nepal and friends what diversity you can get when you have these clubs which are uh, in the cloud which are on uh, the virtual world the world is your membership so let's take advantage of this flexibility that has come up in rotary for starting in rotary clubs and i think the best way to attract we have focused always that we want young members if you want young members it is the virtual world that we tell them so suddenly this young person who's working from home remembers friday evening oh i have my club meeting all he needs to put is a nice shirt not even a trouser he can be in his or her pajamas and you can still attend your club meeting you don't have to travel no car you don't need to spend 45 minutes going and coming back from your club meeting just zoom in finish the meeting zoom out and while in the meeting do a project anywhere in the world it can be as exciting for young people imagine they have a kid at home they can look after the kid switch off the video if they need to these are practical things i'm telling you so let's get started new clubs and david uh, cooper dge i would request you to start a few rotary clubs definitely the flexible ones i'm sure you can do with the help of your rotary uh, presidents who would be interested in sponsoring clubs so when we grow more we will be able to do more and what is it that we want to do more more service to change lives friends rotary gives this amazing amazing opportunity of caring for others sharing with others thinking of others even before we think of ourselves i have lived it and only because of rotary have i lived it when i joined rotary i was just 25 years old service was the last thing on my mind till my rotary club took me just a few months later when i joined they took me about 50 kilometers away from my home and i i i saw a different world just in my own city 50 kilometers away what i took for granted in my life was luxury or even a dream for those people in that village for me it was a choice whether i want hot water or cold water these people did not have toilets at their homes i was wondering which school to send my child to the only school that village had was below a tree the black charcoal painted wall was the only blackboard they had seen and i realized there are two worlds in this world one where there is so much and one where there is so little rotary gives us that amazing opportunity to reduce that disbalance a little we can what are we doing we are trying to redistribute gandhi had said there is enough in this world for every man's need but not enough even for one man's greed there is enough and what are we trying to do we try to take from where there is enough and try to take it to places where there isn't so where there isn't water we try to go and dig bore wells there and what great work it is i mean it's god's work on earth let me tell you people who are who are famished because of no rain water and you sink in bore wells in those areas and water gushes out and see the 
peace, see the happiness on the faces of those people. When you mend the heart of a little child, when the surgery is done for the child and the child starts walking again, see the joy of the parents. They had waited for nine months for their child to come into this world. And the bundle of joy comes, they are overjoyous. And suddenly they find their child turning blue. It's a blue baby with a hole in the heart. It pierces a hole in their hearts also. And Rotary means not just one little heart, but the hearts of everyone in that family. Isn't that God's work on earth? And but for Rotary, I don't think I would have been able to do any of this. I wonder how many of us would have been able to do. So presidents, don't miss this opportunity. If there is no opportunity in your backyard because everything is fine, if the world is absolutely wonderful, then let the backyard of the entire world become your area. Do projects in Africa, do in South Asia, do in South America, do in places where there is a need. David Cooper can be the best person to tell you where the projects can be done. All David needs to do is go on our WhatsApp group, uh, our Facebook group and punch in there. I'm ready to do a water well project. By the evening, he'll get five requests from around the world. We can do a water well project. You want to do heart surgery is the same thing. You want to improve the education system in a country. I'm saying in a country. Yes, that's what is possible. Three global grants from you for two years and you will change the education system in Nepal. I tell you this from experience. Having spoken to the Nepal education minister just about three months back, they are ready for it. It's just for the pandemic that we are waiting. So friends, that's the power. Rotary has amazing, amazing power. And I've realized it. I mean, uh, Rotary's power is best exhibited by our polio eradication program. What passion. What power, what network. Over 35 years, we've given doses to more than 3 billion children. And not once, but multiple times. Saved lives or saved them from getting paralyzed in 19 million children. It's as good as awarding a mini world war. I think if there are people in this world who bring peace, it is people like Rotarians. When you bring water into those houses where there is no water, when you mend the heart of a little child, when you bring education to those children, those girls who are not getting educated, you bring peace into their lives. And next year, friends, when we do all of this, let the overarching theme be empowering girls. Even today, in every part of the world, the girls are either discriminated or disadvantaged. Let's stop that. And it is possible for us to do that. Let's start talking about it. Let's make a lot of noise about it. So that at the end of the year, everyone in Rotary is talking about empowering girls. And mind you, only talking won't help. So we will have to do a lot of work. And there is so much that can be done. In different parts of the world, different things can be done. I'll just give you one or two examples where you may want to uh, participate in any of these projects and programs. Uh, how about skilling them? How about ensuring that they do not drop out of school? In India, for example, the school going rate is right up to 90%, above 90%. But by the time the girls get to... By the time they get to class nine, 50% of them drop out and more than 70% of them are girls. Can we start providing scholarships to them so that they do not drop out of schools? And let me tell you, post COVID, this is going to be a big menace where children will drop out of school and the majority of them are going to be girls. How about looking at water sanitation issues? Even today, there are countries and countries where there are not enough gender segregated, adequate number of toilets for girls. And they drop out because of that. How about getting into their menstrual hygiene management? A simple thing like $4 you spend and you give them reusable sanitary pads, which can be used for two years. $4, two years, and these are sanitary pads which are approved by UNICEF. And there are no better people than UNICEF to support children issues. 
these are projects that you can get into if you find there is abuse there is people who are discriminated how about starting a helpline for them you know when people are dejected when they are discriminated it's a great thing to just provide them succor over a phone call somebody wants to uh, speak their heart out and there is somebody who is on the other hand is a professional maybe a psychiatrist maybe a counselor can provide so much help to that person there are various things different types of projects that can be done so i would encourage you find out david you again can be the best bridge or the other clubs who are already doing projects with different parts of the world find out what the needs are there will be needs even on your in your own backyard as far as empowering girls is concerned so friends let's all get together let's serve to change lives let me end with what i had written when i had spoken about the theme of the year the biggest gift we are given is the power to touch a life to change to make a difference in the circle of life if we can reach out with our hand heart and soul the magic will begin to happen as the wheel begins to roll david let's turn the wheel together on 1st of july so all humanity thrives we have the power and the magic to serve to change lives thank you Okay, we'll have questions. Any questions? This is a big opportunity. Mr. President-elect, can you hear me all right? Yes, I can. We have we have one question from the floor already. When is your sure. next? When is your next in-person trip to West Virginia scheduled? You know, the president goes only if he's invited. You invite me and I'll be there. All right, you all heard it, right? Are we going to invite him here? <laughs> Who else has a question? I'll pick on somebody. Well, Mr. President-elect, it looks like you hit all the high points. Everyone seems more than satisfied with your presentation this morning, or should I say this evening? Wonderful, thank you so much. Thank you very much for joining us. Another, please, round of applause for our international president-elect. Thank you. Thanks a lot, it was a pleasure, absolutely. The bonus was to see Stephanie and Peter. I didn't know they would be here. They are, and you are welcome to stay on the call as long as you'd like, sir. Thanks, thank you so much. Uh, I would then save these 15 minutes that I had for question and answer and move on to my next meeting thereafter. Thanks a lot. See you. Bye. Please do. Thank you, sir. Thanks. And Governor, I didn't see you. Uh, congratulations for uh, steering your district through a turbulent year. Well, thank you very much. Our, our Governor-elect is actually working the room, so if you're comfortable with it, I will speak on his behalf and, and thank you again for taking the time out of what I'm sure is an already hectic schedule to join us. There are 535 districts in this world that are having a pets this year, and you have chosen to spend part of your time with ours in, in our wee little part of the world. And we couldn't thank you enough for being part of this today. Thanks so much, Tom. Can I, can I make a comment, Sean? Can you hear me? Absolutely. Go right ahead, sir. I don't know whether the participants had a full appreciation of the actual work that President-elect Shaker has done in India. And I would like to invite Shaker to tell you a bit about the TEACH program, opening of schools, opening of eye clinics. This is a man who doesn't just talk the talk, he walks the walk. What, what he has done in India is truly outstanding. And Shaker, I would really like to invite you just for three or four minutes, to give some highlights of the actual humanitarian contribution you have made to the development of India. Please, Shaker. So I'll tell you, how was I inspired to do whatever I tried to do? Long time back, Kalyan Banerjee invited me to his son's wedding in a small town where he lives. He lives about 200 kilometers away from Mumbai in an industrial town where they had 200,000 people living, which is a very small town by India's comparison. 
200,000 people in a city is very small in India. I live in a city which is uh, one, which is uh, 12 million. So when I go uh, to some place which is only 200,000, now they had one Rotary Club and I'm talking about 15 years back. I had gone for a wedding of his son, but I was free in the afternoon. They said, come, we'll show you what our Rotary Club does. They took me to a school and I was amazed to look at that school. 2,000 children study there in that school and what an outstanding campus. And then they told us the story. When they came to that village, uh, to that city about uh, 15 years back, there was no school. And their children had to study the start at the school. This is Rotary Club of Wapi. That school has now become such a big school. But then they realized when the school children get out, they will need to go to a college. So they built the first college, then the second college, third college, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven colleges built by one Rotary Club. Now they've applied for a university status. Power of one. The same day they showed me a clinic. They told me a story of the clinic. They said we had to take care of healthcare also. Today that clinic is a 200 bedded state of the art multi-speciality hospital. Heart surgeries to everything is done at that town only and only because of Rotary. I got so inspired. I said, this is how uh, the work of Rotary needs to be done. And why I want to tell it to the president says, when I said, you can go and change the education system in a country, that's what my goal now is. Our work has to be of such scale for an organization which is 116 years old, which is in more countries than the United Nations has its members. And where we have a legacy of nearly eradicating a disease. I mean, it's no mean deal. deal. Every year, somebody gets a Nobel for the medicine, but diseases aren't going. If it will go the next one, and who knows, we may have already reached the last two cases in this world. So friends, for us to take up programs, if 35 years back, people had the courage and passion to take up something like polio eradication, I think our programs and projects today should be of a scale where we make a difference in large difference community where our impact goes to millions of people. So with that, we started something very audacious in India. We said, we will make India totally literate. What did not happen in, in 75 years of our independence, we said, we will do it in 75 months. We presented our paper to the education minister, to the education department. They all loved the idea. They said, yes, this is the way to go forward. And the next education policy, the adult literacy policy is based on what we presented, what Rotary presented to the government of India. So as soon as the pandemic is over, we are committed and we will do it. The next audacious statement was to tell the education, to tell the water ministry that we will at Rotary in India do 10% of the work that the government of India is wanting to do. So they want to set up 100,000 check dams in the next five years. We said, okay, we'll do 10,000. But how will we do 10,000? Five years of the government means six governors from Rotary. Six years means 1,666 each year, divided by 40 districts in India, 40 check dams. 40 check dams is just two global grants for one district. Just two global grants and you can put up 40 check dams. Now, now suddenly something which was so grand, big, difficult becomes doable. And that's the power of Rotary. So I would say, David, when I said, uh, David isn't here, I suppose, Sean and to the other leaders, I would say, we are an organization which has dreamt and work on, worked on passion. Somebody dreamt of eradicating polio and look where we are. We have now started programs of scale. Foundation may have been able to support just one of them, but I'm sure in each country, we can do five programs of scale, each of us. It is possible. Today, I'm seeing just maybe day after tomorrow, I'm going to sign an MOU with some Indians settled in America who are going to send 50,000 oxygen concentrators to India, and it's a non-rotary organization. But they want at grassroots level, the management all to be done by Rotary because they have faith in the work of Rotary. This is worth $40 million, one single project. So friends, if we start doing programs of scale, governments come to us, people join us, 
people have faith in us and i'm fortunate that the one thing i could do was dream big and then people start joining if you are sincere and passionate about it so we were so one dream was to set up 50 i hospitals i'm a little behind in that we've just been able to set up 19 of them wanted to do 5000 heart surgeries we've ended up doing 20000 heart surgeries the next five years it's going to be 35000 more heart surgeries for children and not just in india from across the world children come from africa all of south asia so my friends start programs and projects of such scale that people are in awe of rotary we are an organization worthy of being in awe only for one thing that's polio eradication we can do many other things which are equivalent to that thanks anybody else have any other questions and i apologize i didn't look to see the, of those joining us virtually whether any of you had any questions as well i see there's we have six past governors uh in the room or on the call mr president elect anything that you would uh say to encourage them to to remain active within the district you know if there are people who need to be the most active it is the past governors because they are like principals of a school you know principals of a college i mean when you lose a principal of a college it's like losing a library that's the power of a principal in a college or a school and that is what a past governor is he or she has spent so many years understood every aspect of rotary given a good part of their life to the work of rotary they need to be very very active and i hope they are in your district uh they can contribute tremendously i have a formula you know i'm a chartered accountant so to me service above self is converted into a ratio i put service at the top self below anything i spent on myself is self anything i spent on others for good of others is service so my membership fee my fees to rotary international my club dues district dues my magazine dues my fellowship whatever i spend is all self if imagine that is a 1000 dollars just to say anything i contribute below 1000 dollars then my ratio is not even one then where is service above self it is service is below self then so that's where and so why do i say that a good rotarian the ratio should be 2 or 3 a past governor something upwards of 5 a past director something upwards of 10 for a president at least something upward of 50 anybody else have any other questions shaker could you give us a little update on what's going on in india with covid sure i think we've just crossed the hump or so i would like to believe yes the newspapers also tell so i was very disturbed during this period when all of this happened i myself was fighting covid uh, despite having taken two injections i am in mean, two shots and 10 days had passed probably had another 10 days passed i would not have had this but fortunately because of the vaccines maybe i came out despite it being a severe one when i came out i was aghast to see that from a position where india was so comfortably in fact providing vaccine to other countries the focus of the government got shifted a little to other issues in india and we all held broke close but fortunately and i must thank uh, peter stephanie these are people who have been working on some uh, grants etc and they've been working on getting people to uh, send relief material etc to india and the world has poured their heart out absolutely uh, sending equipments mm, and i tell you i love doing global grants but dole is not what my country should have asked for or got so i stand committed if ever anywhere else there is a disaster we in india rotarians will be the first to help out just as a gesture of repayment of the debt that we have been given by each and every one of you from around the world thank you so much for what you have done coming back to the scenario yes there was a lack of con oxygen concentrators unbelievable that in a country like that india we do not have enough oxygen people are dying because of that and they were dying so we got quickly into at the act 
And as I mentioned to you, 50,000, out of the 50,000, 15,000 have already come into the country. And they have already got started distributed partly in my own district because that's what those, uh, it's a group of about 25 Indians who are uh, venture capitalists and techies uh, based out of America. They have a, a group and they uh, are sending this equipment here. There are so many others who are doing it and Rotarians are doing so much work. Uh, they are setting up oxygen plants. They must have set up at least uh, more than 3,000 bedded hospitals across India. Some with 100 beds, some with 50 beds, only for COVID purposes. Uh, so the right now the need was oxygen beds, ventilators and uh, hospital facilities. Everywhere Rotarians have done some amazing work in the second part. The first part they had done amazing work also when there was the first wave and this time also. I'm absolutely happy at the way uh, Rotarians have stood by us from around the world and the Rotarians in India have taken the initiative to be the frontline workers absolutely working in tandem with the government. The government itself is recognizing the work of it. Anybody else have any other questions? Don't want to take up any more of our president elect's time than uh, he Thanks. has to offer, but uh, this is a fantastic opportunity. We want to have a conversation with the man where the buck stops, correct, sir? <laughs> I don't see any more hands up, Mr. President elect. Again, I, I can't thank you enough. Uh, it's nice to see you. I'm sorry we're not in person. It's been a while since we've gotten a chance to shake hands with each other, but. I look forward to our next opportunity to do that. Sure, sure. I look forward to that opportunity. Also. All right. Thank you again. Thank you. Namaste. Well, I've got uh, I've got some good news and some bad news. The good news is this next uh, person that's going to share some time with us this morning is absolutely fantastic. The bad news is she has to follow our international president elect. So the bar has set high. This, this young lady is uh, on the RI Board of Directors and serves as the chair of its executive committee, as you heard uh, Shecker share with us. She's a member of the Rotary Club of McMurray, Pennsylvania, and has served Rotary as a foundation trustee, chair of the Rotary Strategic Planning and TRF Centennial Celebration Committees. She is a member of the Atlanta RI Convention Committee. She's uh, been a moderator, international training leader, a regional foundation coordinator. She's going to get mad at me if I keep talking and telling you how wonderful she is, but that's okay. She's usually mad at me most of the time anyway. She's been a Rotarian since 1991. She participates in every project. She is everywhere you would want her to be, and then some. Her professional background is in higher education, consulting, and the entertainment industries, and perhaps she might share a little bit of a story about that, uh, or maybe even do a polka if we're lucky. She received her doctorate degree in leadership studies at Indiana University of Pennsylvania and has been recognized and awarded by the Rotary Foundation and numerous community and international organizations. Without further ado, let me introduce to our group today, my friend and Rotary International Director, Stephanie Yurchik. Stephanie, the floor is yours. Welcome. Thank you, Governor Sean, and thanks to both you and DGE Coop for inviting me to be a part of this PETS program. You know, PETS programs are so fabulous because after these sessions, you all have more tools in your toolkit that you can begin to use now and throughout your presidency. So I was delighted to listen to Shaker. And when you hear what I have to say, you're gonna notice that everything that he talked about falls exactly from the RI action plan. Now my tech person today is DG Sean. So every time I say advance the slide, he's going to put the slide up and we'll just go through this strategic plan. Now you're thinking, good God, gentlemen, it's 930 in the morning. Why are we talking about strategic planning? How boring, but I promise in the time I have allotted, I am going to help you demystify what this plan is all about 
where it came from, and what, most importantly, what you do with it at the club level. So, Sean, if you'll go ahead and start that PowerPoint, we'll start with the first slide. And you'll see that the first slide says, well, that's not it. <laughs> Although Julia is a great speaker. I think we need the one that says action plan, Sean. Well, I'll go ahead and the slides can catch up. So, you know, you've heard two different terms. You've heard action plan and strategic plan. What's the difference? Well, six years ago, when Rotary invested in a joint committee to start this process, the committee was looking for strategies to look for ways to move Rotary forward. But we know that we're people of action. So when the plan actually launched more than two years ago, we changed that to action plan so that it resonated with more Rotarians. And that's the term under which you can find this information on our Rotary website, rotary.org. That, um, slash action plan. So how did we get started? Well, the first thing we did, you can go to the, to the next slide, Sean. Then first thing we did was take a look at each other and say, you know what? We're not writing a single word of this. Instead, we went out to the Rotary world. We started with surveys. We had three separate surveys on Rotary's future, on the vision concept, and on statements. And we sent them out to anybody for whom we had contact information. We sent them out to Rotarians, to non-Rotarians, to former Rotarians, to Rotaractors, Interactors, alumni, everybody. If you got the very first survey, you'd have recognized it because it was the first time that RI had sent out a survey with pictures. We put pictures in the survey and said, who looks like a Rotarian? And oh my goodness, that exercise in and of itself, based on geography and demographics and culture, gave us all sorts of information. And we did pay attention to that information. And it, of course, was different from, from different places. But we didn't stop with the surveys. After we had surveyed over a million people, we decided there was another thing that we needed to do. So we were working with a consulting partner out of New York, and that group had offices all over the world. So we decided that we would do something called focus groups. We would use those places around the globe to meet with interested people who wanted to participate. Now, if you've been involved in a focus group, you know it's a little bit different from a survey. Survey is very individual. You sit at a computer and fill it out or you do it paper and pencil. But in a focus group, you're in a room together with other people or on a screen together with other people and you listen to answers that other people have and it may trigger something that you had completely forgot about. So we did that and we think we reached 29 different countries and we had over 400 people complete those. So if we go to the next slide, um, you'll see that there were 74 of these that were done. And we also included in-depth interviewing. In-depth interviewing were opportunities that we had to talk to our own staff in Evanston, as well as in all of our offices around the globe. Uh, this slide says 28 countries, but I'm pretty sure it's 29, and we hit every single zone in the Rotary world. So what did we do then? Well, we went to the information, and we started to look for the phrases that kept bubbling up. And we put those phrases together in a sentence. We tested it around the world, and we came up with Rotary's vision statement from what you all suggested to us. And you've seen it, and I'm sure you know it by heart. Together, we see a world where people unite and take action to create lasting change across the globe, in our communities and in ourselves. It's those last three words that make this vision statement so different and appealing. 
because in my 31 years of being in Rotary, this was the first time Rotary was acknowledging that when we help and when we serve to change lives, it not only helps the people we're serving, it helps us, it changes us. I'm a very different person today than I was 31 years ago, and I'm sure you can say the same thing. Our next slide gives an overview of what we did the, with the second look at the data. We went back to the data and started to look for strategies. What were the things that were gonna move us to that vision statement? And we came up with what we called five, four priorities. One talks about impact, one talks about expanding our reach, making sure that our participants are engaged, and then increasing our ability to adapt. So let me just spend a, a few minutes on each of them and what it means at the corporate level. So the first one, increase our impact. This is a priority that's telling us as an organization that we need to focus our programs and our offerings. You know, we've never been really good at measurement. I have two stories here that I always share. One of them has to do with when Ian Risley was president. Who was in Rotary when Ian was president? Okay, do you remember what he asked us to do? Sure, he asked us to plant trees. And what did we do? We went out, we planted trees one tree for every member in our club. And we counted up all those numbers and sent it off to RI. But you know, we stopped short because in measurement, there's input, output, outcome, and impact. We, we stopped with the, the uh, output. How many trees did we plant? We could have taken that a step further and talked about what did planting all these trees do to CO2 levels? How did it affect soil erosion in places in the world? We needed to take it a step further. There is a program where we have always had strong impact statements, and that is on in our eradicating polio efforts. Since the get-go, since the mid 80s, we have been able to say strong things like when polio is eradicated, 11 million children every year will not get this crippling disease. There'll be X amount of dollars saved every year because we don't have these ancillary costs for post-polio syndrome and other care. That caught the attention of Rotarians who wanted to join us, people who wanted to join us to become Rotarians, as well as donors, as well as partners. You know, when we started in the mid 80s, we had a handful of partners. Today, we have more than a dozen, including Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the Gavi Vaccine Alliance, the World Health Organization. They paid attention to those impact statements and said, hmm, there is something here going on. This group has figured out how to achieve success in this area, and we want to be a part of it. So the message here at both the corporate level and our club level is, we need to figure out how to measure our success so that we're able to tell our story in a stronger way. Our next slide talks about priority number two, which is expanding our reach. And this, this deals with uh, much of what Shaker talked about. How do we grow and diversify our membership? You know, our council on legislation in 2016, which is a big legislative meeting. Peter is going to be chairing that next, next uh, spring. It's where we make decisions about uh, policy. The 2006 council gave us new club models. It brought forward the satellite club model, the passport club, the e-club, the cause-based club, we had so many new ways to bring people into Rotary. If you haven't seen the Vimeo put out by Rotary called Any Town, you need to look at it. In my estimation, it is the best video that Rotary has ever done. It tells a story of a town much like mine where I am. My Rotary Club is in this Norsterbane Township in, in southwestern Pennsylvania. And we meet on Wednesday at noon. Love my club, 
legacy, whether we meet on the patio at the country club or our Zoom, whatever we're doing, I, I try to get there as much as I can. But I got to thinking, who is in this community that can't make a meeting at Wednesday at noon? Maybe they're a teacher with uh, students to deal with. Maybe they're a medical professional with uh, appointments. Maybe there's some other reason they can't get away from their business or their obligations at noontime. Who are we missing? So my club and my community are prime targets for places where we could show the appeal to people who may want to come into the magic of Rotary by creating different ways for them to do that. The Rotary RI level, you may have heard that they tested a pilot um, and the pilot was, you don't belong to any club. And they tested that outside of Chicago and outside of Houston. I think they called it Rotary Connect. And we're gonna hear about that at Houston and see, see how that did. But I don't know if you've noticed, but even in my own club meetings, when we go hybrid, we end up getting more people at meetings because they've heard about what we're doing in Murray, Pennsylvania, and they want to find out about it. So expanding our reach is critical because it's going to help us create these new ways for people to come into our organization. Our next slide talks about priority number three, which is enhancing the engagement of our participants. Now, when we talk about participant, we're not just talking about members, we're talking about anybody that comes into the influence of Rotary. Could be a member, it could be a student of the month, it could be parents of the student of the month, it could be a beneficiary in our community. So what we're suggesting here is that we really need to get better at, at figuring out how to deliver value because people come into Rotary for different reasons. Think about why you came into Rotary. It's different. In 1905, when Paul Harris started Rotary, he didn't start Rotary because he wanted to build a toilet block in Chicago. He did it because he was lonely. He didn't know anybody in Chicago. So he found three other guys and said, hey, let's meet once a week, get to know one another, and the service came later. And then there are some people who right away say, wow, that club is doing great things for the community. I want to do that too, and they want to serve. And so that's their reason for coming in. Some young professionals look at us and say, oh my, look at all that talent in that room. That would be a great place to network. And you know what it is, Rotary is the original networking organization. And then others may say, I'm young in my career. I, you know, I bet if I hang out with these people, I could learn things. And that's absolutely true too. At the RI level, several years ago, Rotary partnered with Toastmasters International for that very reason. Realizing that Toastmasters could create with Rotary a co-branded product that addresses the kinds of things that are important to young people, public speaking, project man management, leadership, and that, that product now exists on our learning resource center. So that's a way that the corporate organization took a look at how can we deliver value. We need to do it at our club levels so that when people walk into our doors with expectations, we're better able to meet them with our programs, our speakers, and our projects. And the next slide is the big question. So how do we bring this all, oh, oh one more, I'm sorry. It's uh, our fourth one, increasing our ability to adapt. Oh my goodness, this one is an overdrive. I almost skipped it because it's you know something that has become second nature to us. When you think about it, 15 months ago, the way we did Rotary was ripped from us. And we couldn't do Rotary that way anymore. But very quickly, clubs around the world figured out how to connect and how to serve. We've done surveys at the RI level, and there's something like 68% of clubs who are meeting virtually, and another 28% who are doing hybrid, and then another group that's simply 
using their phones and technology to check on each other and make sure that people and, and members have what they need. If you've heard President Holger speak, he often refers to caring for our members. And that's what he's talking about, making sure that we are in a culture of caring about one another. This is also the priority that's asking us to look at our governance and our structure and the way we process things and to make sure that we have a more diverse group of people from time to time making decisions. You know, my very first Rotary Club was in California, Pennsylvania. I was in the club with Charles Keller, past President Keller, and the treasurer in that club had been in the role for 34 years. Oh my goodness, what's wrong with that picture? You know, there had, had to be other people in that club who would have made great officers and would have, you know, loved to do that job, but it just never occurred to them to ask anybody else. So the next slide now is the big question. How do we bring this plan to life? So let's go to the next slide. And here's what we need to do. We need to ask our districts and our clubs to increase their impact. The easiest way to do this is to do a community assessment. Do this with other groups who are already looking at your community and see what the needs are. Make sure that your projects and your programs are addressing what your community needs. When you do that, you're better able to measure. You can measure where you start and then measure where you end, and then you have some idea of your success. This is kind of a no brainer. It's kind of like going on a diet. How are you gonna know if you lost any weight unless you jump on the scale when you get started? So measurement is really critical to help us focus the things that we're doing. Next slide talks about challenging our clubs to expand their reach. And again, have the conversations with your club and take a look at your community. If your club mirrors what your community looks like, then you have a handle on your future. And if it doesn't, then you have a great opportunity. The next slide reminds us that we want to enhance engagement of participants. You know, the easiest way to do this is to start to do entrance interviews. Don't talk to people when they're leaving your club. That's the wrong time. Talk to them as they're coming in and then continually so that you can find out what are their interests, what attracted them, what, are, what would they like to do. That's the way to make sure that we can maximize what we're doing in our programs and speakers and projects and keep people engaged. And finally, challenging our clubs to increase their ability to adapt. The best thing that you can do with all of this information that you heard from me today is to take these four priorities, they are available on the website, have a club meeting and divide your club into four sections, either in breakout rooms on Zoom or in a room and give each group one of the priorities and say to them, this is the priority for, for moving us forward. Well, how does this make sense for our club? You may remember when I started, I said, as a committee, we didn't write a single word of this. We went out and reached out to the Rotary world and we got input from others because people don't wash rental cars because they don't own them. So when people feel ownership, even if you don't use a single thing they've come up with, the fact that they've been part of the conversation and discussion is gonna give them that ownership. So I would encourage you to do that uh, early, early in your term, so that you also get a handle on the thinking of your club members. And finally, my last slide is really one that shows where you can learn more. I mentioned you can see this information on the website. There's a planning guide. There's an action planning course in the Resource Center. And I don't know how many of you have been looking at the Rotary Magazine, but every month they tend to have a one or two page spread about one of these priorities and they've been calling them advertorials. 
So with that, Sean Coop, I'm going to stop. Uh, if there's a question or two, we can handle it. If not, you can collect them in the chat and I'll be happy to answer them because I know we've got a great speaker coming up with Peter Kyle. Stephanie, speaking of, of Peter Kyle, as, as penance for my technological ineptitude at the beginning of your presentation, would you care to bring uh, the next speaker to the mic? <laughs> well, I'll be happy to help with that. The next speaker is Rotary International Director Peter Kyle. It has been my great honor to be able to serve along with Peter during this Rotary year. You know, the reason we're doing that, we're the only zone in the world that has two directors, had to do with rezoning. And so because of the geography of where I live, I ended up in zone 33. So Peter and I have been fortunate enough to work together for this entire year. Peter is thoughtful. Peter is sincere. Peter is intelligent. He is going to be a fabulous executive chair. Peter has a passion for peace, and he also has a passion for all things Rotary. So it is my great pleasure and honor to introduce to you my friend and my colleague director, Peter Kyle. Wonderful. Thank you. Wow. Wow. I think that is the, the most gracious, the most generous introduction I've ever had in Rotary. Stephanie, you are hereby promoted to my official um, introducer in chief. Thank you for that <laughs> kind introduction. Uh, following Stephanie is always a challenge uh, and following Shaker is a challenge. He is such a sincere uh, individual. But it is a pleasure for me to be here with you this morning. I'm very conscious that I stand between you and the break. So uh, I'm not going to say too much. I want to congratulate all the present elects on stepping up uh, to become president. And I want to tell you just a quick story on that. Uh, about 15 years ago, I was in your position. I was thinking about putting my name in the hat to become a club president. I come from New Zealand and I happened to be down in New Zealand at that time. And I talked to an old friend of mine who was a past Rotary International president, Bill Boyd. Some of you may have met Bill. And I asked Bill whether I should put my hat in the ring. And he proceeded to tell me that I should. He said, it's the best job on Rotary. You can do this, you can do that. You can mold the club, you can create projects and so on. So I did, I put my hat in the ring, I was selected. I had a wonderful year, I got various awards. I was very happy. Uh, a year or two later, I was back down in New Zealand. I caught up with Bill and I said, Bill, I owe you a big debt of gratitude. You encouraged me to put my hat in the ring, I did. I had a wonderful year. As you said, it's the best year in road trip. And Bill said, well, I know I told you it's the best year in Rotary, but the really best year in Rotary is when you become a district governor. So all of you be mindful uh, that the, the next best year in Rotary is when you become district governor. I, just to finish the story, uh, I put my hat in the ring. I was selected. I became district governor. It was a great year. You can see where this is going. I was back down in New Zealand a few years later. I caught up with Bill, thanked him again for his encouragement. And once again, he said, well, yes, being district governor is quite good, but the really best year in Rotary is when you become a Rotary International Director. So I put my hat in the ring. I'm currently a Rotary International Director. I have all sorts of plans to go down to New Zealand at some point, but my wife has made it very plain uh, that she will only go to New Zealand on condition that we have no meetings, no discussions, no telephone calls, nothing to do with Bill Boyd. Uh, so that uh, we'll see how that uh, shakes out on my next trip to New Zealand. So I've been asked to say a few things about the Innovative Club Advocate Program. Uh, and this is a membership program. 
I'm not going to repeat all the things that Shaker said. He dealt with membership very, very thoroughly. Uh, as we all know, uh, there has been a, a marked decline in membership in Rotary in North America. To a large extent, that has been balanced by enormous increases in membership in India and South Asia. But in North America, uh, we really are facing uh, a serious situation. We have lost two zones in the last year. Uh, they've gone to India. And the, the balance of Rotary power, if you like, is increasingly moving towards uh, South Asia. So as a way to uh, try and uh, limit uh, the impact of that and to increase membership in Rotary, two years ago, then President Mark Maloney established the Grow Rotary program. Uh, all the advice we, we received from Evanson suggested that the most significant way to increase membership is by forming new clubs. That's not to say that we shouldn't continue to increase membership in, in existing clubs. Everyone should be seeking new members, as, as uh, President Shaker said, uh, each one bring one. But our, our experience has been that forming new clubs is often the quickest and most effective way to increase membership. So what we did was to appoint uh, two individuals in zone 33, which is the zone that your district is uh, part of, to become what we call the zone innovative club advocate. It's a fancy term, but it really means someone who's going to promote the formation of new clubs throughout the zone. And then we invited every district to form their own district innovative club advocate. That framework, Innovative Club Advocates, which is focusing on club formation, exists alongside the, the zone membership army, if you like. Uh, every district has a membership committee chair. And at the zone level, we have a Rotary coordinator uh, whose prime focus is to promote membership. And the Rotary coordinator is assisted by various assistant coordinators. We also have a full-time staff official. Uh, Audrey Knight is our regional membership officer, and he's available to provide guidance right throughout the zone on any aspect of membership. So we have a large infrastructure focusing on increasing membership, increasing clubs. And this year, we have seen quite an increase in new clubs, particularly cause-related clubs, passport clubs, satellite clubs, e-clubs, you name it. Uh, Rotary now uh, provides all sorts of mechanisms for creating new clubs. Just this morning, as I was listening to Shaker, I heard of a new club being formed uh, in North Carolina, focusing on child abuse, child abuse, preventing child abuse. We have clubs focusing on veterans, on different medical areas, on polio, clubs focusing on the environment, you name it. It's possible now to form a club focusing on a particular cause. So I invite you to look at your clubs and look at your communities. Look around and see what other organizations exist alongside Rotary in your community. Is there an environmental group? Is there a child poverty group? Is there a refugee group? There are all sorts of other organizations, I'm quite sure, in each of your communities. And I encourage you to reach out to those communities and see whether there's scope for forming some sort of alliance and possibly inviting them to come into the Rotary family, become a subgroup of Rotary. This is what's happening all around the Rotary world. Individuals that have a passion for a particular cause and want to leverage that into the wider international community are finding uh, avenues to do so through Rotary and particularly through the e-club format. It's now possible to be in a club uh, with members all around the world. Like Stephanie, I am constantly talking to clubs in different parts of the world. 
in Russia, in Hong Kong, in Lebanon, in Norway, in New Zealand, Australia, thanks to Zoom, and talking to clubs that are focusing on particular causes. As Stephanie mentioned, my primary passion in Rotary is on the peace, in the peace area. I've been actively involved in a variety of peace-related assignments over the last uh, 20 years. Uh, I'm in the process of uh, launching a very significant peace-related initiative throughout Zone 33 and 34. Rotary describes this as the single largest peace-building initiative, community-based peace-building initi initiative in Rotary's history. And again, there's a possibility uh, to create peace-related clubs. We have quite a number of e-peace clubs. We have alumni clubs. We have cause-related clubs for parents of Interact students. There is an amazing variety of causes which are now part of the Rotary Network. So I encourage you to consider forming a new club, perhaps a satellite club to start with, and over time build that up uh, to become a club, a Rotary club in its own right. Reach out to Rotaract. Rotaract is now a full partner of Rotary. And the Rotaractors are amazingly dynamic. They want to be involved. They are incredibly competent, especially when it comes to technology. Last weekend, I had the privilege, along with Stephanie, of uh, participating in a, uh, a Rotaract presidential conference probably one of the best conferences I've ever been to, best Rotary conferences I've ever been to. Well-organized, a good balance of substance and lightheartedness and interesting breakout sessions. And once again, the Rotary Act has proved that they are just as capable of doing these things as anybody else. So reach out to Rotary Act. They will provide the, the, the buzz, the adrenaline, the dynamism, the excitement that you need. Um, to go to a Rotaract club meeting uh, is really quite an experience, quite different from uh, the older, perhaps traditional clubs. Uh, so form alliances with Rotaract and of course, reach out to Interact. There are all sorts of ways that you as a club president can work with other groups in the community to help build your club. Uh, we think, we tend to think that we've lost members this year because of COVID. The evidence doesn't support that. The main reason we have lost members all over North America is complacency. Take a club of 40, the club loses, let's say two members, gains one, loses two. So they're down one. Next year, they start with 39. This year, they lose three, they gain one. The next year, they're down to 37. And over time, that club, because it's failing to increase members at the rate necessary to keep it uh, at its current, if not its, uh, at an increased level. And we have, to, we have to deal with that. There is a, an expected attrition each year, 10 to 12% of members will leave uh, for natural causes or for uh, job reasons. Uh, we need to have a ratio of new members coming in, which is greater than the ratio of members leaving. So I encourage you to reach out uh, to attract new members in your club. And there are many, many, many resources available to you to help you with this. On the Rotary website, on the Learning Center, uh, lots of uh, very good suggestions uh, that you can use and you can encourage uh, other members in your club uh, to, to study and research and contribute. This is not something you can do on your own. This is a team, a team effort. But consider also forming new clubs, e-clubs, satellite clubs. Again, everything you might need to know about how to go about it is available on the Rotary website or in the Learning Center. So thank you for uh, stepping up to be a club president. I think as Shaker said, uh, you'll have a great year. I certainly had a great year and I know Stephanie had a great year. Uh, 
and I look forward to meeting you in person. I live just outside Washington, DC, so I'm not so far from West Virginia. I have a love of trains, and I've shared that with uh, Sean and Coop. Uh, so as soon as the pandemic allows, I'm going to be coming your way and uh, participate in some of the, the great uh, vintage trains that you have in West Virginia and the other wonderful sites you have. So thank you, Sean. Thank you, Coop. And good luck to all those on the call. Peter, thank you for sharing your time with us and Stephanie as well. Does anybody in the room or on the call have any other questions for either of our directors? I hear a lot of chit chat in the back, Peter. I think they're already trying to solve the rest of the world's problems. Well, they're, they're probably dashing for the coffee, the coffee or the tea. <laughs> any other questions? Well, again, thank you both for, for sharing your time this morning. Thank you all for being on the call. The bad news is, is we're about to go into a break and I'm going to end the Zoom. The good news is there's still plenty scheduled for the rest of the day. You would have time to get in your car and drive over here and be in person with us if you would like. So again, thank you to our very, very esteemed leaders. Uh, you know, this, this room full of people has been blessed with the, the finest of the finest this morning. And as the, the lame duck with only a few days left, I, I just would thank all of you very much for not only the leadership you provided, but becoming very dear friends of mine and this district along the way. And we look forward to seeing you hopefully next time in person. Woo! So thank you again for, be, for being with us. With that, Coop, I'll turn the mic over to you, thank sir. As you know, we're getting ready for a break, and I just want to put a little bit in perspective. We have from India, Pennsylvania, as he just pointed out, DC today. I'm going to ask Dave to stand up and Sean to stand up because on that level, that's who we go to. Those are our people we talk to every day, every week on conferences, on membership, on foundations. In this district here, there's your RI president. What are your two directors? It's all here on this level. But that's what we're here for today to see the support for everybody in this room as they have been our support in the last year, in the last couple of months, especially because of COVID. Because John will point out he's over 100 or over 1,000 Zoom calls. Most of those are rotors. Um, and that's what's been going on in the back. And as Dan pointed out, and it's really, really think about putting it in perspective. When Shaker talks about a small community of 200,000, as you know, for West Virginia, that's a lot, isn't that correct? But it's the same practices and principles that he is talking about, that 200,000 that we have.